What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are joined once again by Enzo. What's up, Enzo? Hey, guys. How are you? So today we are going to go over our list, our top five list of 4K Blu-rays. It doesn't necessarily have to be Blu-rays. You can probably stream it, or if you have a Cloud Escape, you can do that yeah. there as well. This is going to be our, our top five 4K uh, review discs, samples, content that we use to, to evaluate equipment. So such as like TV screens or speakers. So Atmos DTSX content and what we think looks excellent as far as like video quality is concerned. So Enzo, we're going to kick yeah. it off with you at your number five. Let's go from five down to one. So five, your least okay. favorite to your most favorite. Uh, surprisingly, this was very difficult. <laughs> Just, it, it, there's so much to choose from. Um, but look, uh, Aquaman for me is a big one. Um, I use Aquaman a lot. Um, it is very good. Some people say number five, really? It should have been number two or three or one. Or um, I, I like Aquaman. Um, you know, at the end of the day, very good for high dynamic range. As everyone's well aware, Aquaman is very vivid, very bright. Um, there's some ridiculously very good scenes in that. Um, and, and, you know, even with the, you know, the non-CGI scenes, because everyone obviously goes CGI is always an issue, um, but this CGI looks, you know, kudos to them for the effort. Um, but um, it, it looks great. The, the mix is fantastic on it. Uh, you know, we use it um, uh, surprisingly quite a bit, um, especially with the... Um, there's a scene where they're in Sicily where the camera pans. It's obviously IMAX in that ratio and the camera pans towards the island and, and surprisingly the music mix in that. So the actual um, musical track is very good as well. Um, so Aquaman is definitely one that we use a lot, um, you know, and, and I think probably what was the other scene? The trenches, you know, when they obviously um, go to the ocean, and they've got to swim down. Ironically, quite dark and everyone tends to go, really, you'd use that. But that shows a lot of detail, even though there's a lot of CGI monsters. Um, the the Aquaman trench scene is actually very good. Um, you know, it's probably one of my favorites, to be fair. Um, a so, lot of blacks. A lot of blacks. Too a lot of blacks. Yeah. A lot of blacks. The JVCs love uh, that scene mm -hmm. to be very good because they've got some of the best blacks. Um, we run a Barco. Uh, obviously, not for everyone. It's a bit expensive. But um, the blacks are just, you know, phenomenal. Um, it's a very good disc um, and, and very well mixed. Maybe one of my favorite dc um mixes along with the other one we're going to talk about um but yeah no number five definitely aquaman and your number four <laughs> right so number four the other dc movie ironically not I mean, i'm a big comic buff and love my my comics but uh batman vs superman um is very good i, I think picture quality wise soundtrack wise um we use a, a lot um you know, especially in particular scenes, the scene where um, Batman uses the sound blasters to um, knock him out a bit, um, the bass in that, um, the rain is great, picture quality is great. Um, and the fact that I think you've touched on the shame with some of these when you review them, you know, a lot of the films are shot 35 mil, then they up-convert or they're scanned. Yeah. Um, this this presents really well. I mean, I think um, you quite liked Batman Superman as well, yeah. from memory. Yes, I did. Um, so uh, even the director's cut, um, which for those that didn't like the original movie, watch the director's cut. It does fill a lot of holes, um, but it just presents really well, and it was upmixed really well. And the Atmos is, you know, the, the track on it is really good. So mm -hmm. that would definitely be my number four, um, especially the scenes. Actually, the HDR in that with the when there's fire, um, the colours pop, and the little kryptonite... Um, Blade, the greens on that, um, really good. Uh, we tend to use that a lot. Um, well, I do anyway. Um, Andrew, my business partner, is not here today. He's got his own five. We'll probably get him in one day. But uh, the, I, I really like uh, Batman Superman. You wouldn't um, think that the uh, you don't think that the graininess of it hinders the image quality no, at all, or you don't mind that? Look, I, I'm uh, grain. Uh, I knew this was probably going to come up. Uh, I, I'm a, an ambassador for grain. I, look, cinema for me, and we spoke about this the last video we did. Uh, you know, is very cinematic. Grain is cinematic, and there's a lot of grain haters, but at the same time, there's a lot of grain lovers, and I think it adds that sense of uh, character to the film. I tend to find sometimes we get so good with the picture quality and so sharp 
that like Gemini, for instance, with Will Smith looks like a, a rom-com, you know, it looks like a sitcom, you know, it's very, very um, camcorder-ish like recording. And to me, that feels artificial um, and it disjoints the emotion away from, from it. Uh, whereas with Grain, I like Grain. I think it adds character, not too much of it. I think, you know, um, sometimes they go a bit overboard. It looks just like noise eventually. Um, but no, I, I think the Grain adds that character to the film. I must admit, I believe that, this 4K version is a little bit less grainier than the than the Blu-ray from from what I've read. Um, I've never actually tested the Blu-ray itself, but I, yeah. I, look, I, I'm, I like grain. I think um, you know. Um, I, I still think you know. With everyone's trying to chase this end game of better picture, better picture, but it gets to a point where it just doesn't look right, you know. And I like that cinematic feel. It's all part of that experience. So no, I, I think the grain adds um, character. It's the same way they chose in. Um, what was that one that you did the review, the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where it looks like yeah. a comic strip? Yeah. Right. People were going, my 3D glasses aren't working in the cinema. And they were like, no, that's yeah. just how it's meant to be, you know. I think it just adds that depth. So, no, I, I definitely dig the grain. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. I mean, no. <laughs> weird misconception. I get so much hate because people always say, Shane hates grain. He hates grain. I'm like, dude, when do I ever? I gave Batman v Superman like a nine something. I gave like three hundred and nine point nine or something like that. Like, Man, and and three hundred is three hundred is the grainiest movie. Yeah, like super grainy, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, it's super grainy, and and but it adds that character. You know, yeah. there's a reason the directors do this. They're the pros. It's the way they intend you to experience the film, and, and, and you know, at the end of the day. I think it adds character. And Zack Snyder is an absolute legend and he should run for president. And I think he's fantastic. So all the haters can, yeah, change, <laughs> switch off if you like. Um, my, my next one is a, is a Jewel 3, and there's a reason why. Uh, Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. I, I couldn't separate these. I had to mention both. Um, the, I mean, 2049 is... Uh, it, 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 that that movie in general is just a masterpiece. It's a piece of art, and if you could frame the whole thing and put it on the wall, you probably would. Um, you know, it's a great movie. I know we're not here to talk about movies as such, but um, the scenes in it again um, really immerse you. Um, there's some fantastic scenes in it. All the you know, all the neon drenched signs and the cityscapes and and, and that Atmos track on it is just engaging. Um, it's uh, uh, very, very, uh, if a movie is designed to give you anxiety like Christopher Nolan does in his films, um, it, it, you know, it hits the beat. It's the one track that we use to really test the subs, as Shane, you've mentioned before, that, you know, that yeah. the sub track on uh, 2049. And the remastering of the original Blade Runner is one that um, I tend to always use both, um, especially if a lot of our fans that, well, people that we build cinemas for love the genre. Um, the final cut of the original was 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 awesome, was superb. The transfer was great. And again, you know, I think you've touched on this. The older films have always, you know, the, the way that they're recorded on film, they transfer great to 4K. You know, it's just the joy of it. Um, but look, Blade Runner for me, the Dolby Atmos track, um, the way that it really, I mean, obviously sound complements picture and the way that it immerses you. Um, the opening chapter with the, the floating car that just comes across the um, the screen. Um, and, you know, again, you're only as good as the system you've got. And if the system's being calibrated and if the subs are in the right spot, then you really feel and experience that, um, that movie. Um, there's a difference between hearing it and feeling it. I think that was a famous quote from White Man Can't Jump, if I'm not mistaken. When uh, Woody says to Wesley says to Woody, you can hear Jimmy, but you can't feel Jimmy. Um, you know, and, and that's the same thing. There's, you know, this movie has great bass, but I've heard this movie sound on people's systems where the subs are just haven't been tuned. They've just been turned up, and it just sounds like one big fart, essentially. So it can sound bad, but if it's done well, this Blade Runner disc is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. How do you? How would you take it when people say that twenty forty nine is not real HDR because it's, it doesn't go past like four hundred nits? Um, do you think well, it has I, to hit I, a thousand I, nits to be HDR? Well, it's ir irrelevant because most people aren't even hitting that on their projectors. I mean, most people have a buy a projector and they want I want the biggest screen ever. We touched on this last time, and, and they're nowhere near HDR anyway. Um, no, I, I, I don't. It's still a, it's still a great. Um, disc. I mean, even if it was, um, 
just the the Blu-ray version. I mean, no, I, I honestly don't think that that's relevant. Um, we're not here to tick boxes, and it's very hard to hit HDR in cinema. Mm-hmm. You know, unless you've got a projector that's five thousand lumens and you've got the right screen size. But on every Tom, Dick, and Harry's projector that's eighteen hundred lumens, they've all got one hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty inch screen. No one's hitting HDR there. Um, so maybe the maybe the people that are really fanatic, um, I can understand. You know, they probably have a hundred and ten inch because they want to hit HDR. Um, you know, I, I don't feel that it's that important what's your take on it i feel that if it's got a wide color gamut that you're getting a nice wide spectrum of color yep. Yep. and that you're not getting banning anything like that and that there's is a good contrast between the light and the dark parts of the screen of the image mm-hmm. good separation i think that's uh, yep. more than enough whether it's on a yeah. projector or a television set yeah and i and i think in blade i mean um that scene where he goes to find that the child and there's all those children working, slaving away. Um, there's a lot of separation. Well, the colours are very good. There's the contrast. There's the um, the you know the greys and the the blacks and the detail. Uh, it, it is a very detailed movie. And if yeah. again, if it's calibrated right, there's a lot of things that you've never noticed before um, that come up um, in that film. You know, and even. Um, his AI girlfriend with the um, neon jacket, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that is, uh, there's some serious color in that. Um, but you're right, you know, with the with the whites and the blacks, if we're ticking those boxes, does it really matter? You know, personally? Yeah, yeah people like to uh, complain about the nits, the numbers. Yeah, look, I think there are some people out there, especially people that watch a lot of YouTube channels. There are a lot of people out there that test these movies on TVs and put up yeah. the information on their Oppo or on their Panasonic, and it's got look how many nits in the yeah. you know in that corner. Yeah, I mean, let's just enjoy the films. Uh, as much as we try and hit reference and we try and hit um, you know certification, it is very hard to do exact HDR and, and hit the nit levels um, 100%. So um, no, I don't think it's relevant. Number three. Number three. So um, for me, well, um, no, that was number three, Blade Runner. Number oh, two. Oh, yeah, okay. so we did um, number five, obviously, Aquaman, for those that are joining now. Number four was Batman vs. Superman, the right. director's cut. Uh, then obviously Blade Runner and the original Blade Runner. Um, I did a joint one there. We get them in the joint pack here anyway. Uh, number two, a uh, bit controversial. Some people go, who should be number one? Uh, would probably be Ready Player One. Um, mm. okay. Ready Player One is a movie that, ironically, some people that are in this industry don't really like it uh, to use it. They feel that it's a little bit too CGI. Um, but again, I think a movie is about picture and audio. They both complement each other, and without each other, leaves you a little bit null and you know um, mm-hmm. a bit numb. Um, but I, I tend to find, obviously, the opening scene in Ready Player One with the car race. Um, on our system and using the Trinov, which I know not everyone has, uh, you, you know, you really see uh, the upmixing on this is very impressive. Um, the detail in the coins, you know, when he uses the DeLorean to, uh, and it's got a bloody DeLorean in it. I mean, any movie that's got a DeLorean in it should be number two or one. Um, but the detail in that in that scene uh, and the colours, um, you know, we were using a, a Mad VR. Um, doing a before and after, there's a video that we're going to shoot on this, um, talking about HDR and, and what it does to Ready Player One. You know, that, that scene where he's in the DeLorean and it's all lit up and all the colours and everything, you know, there's some fantastic detail in this film. Um, and the same thing, you know, when he's not in the game, you know, it still looks very good. A little bit grainy um, in certain parts. Um, some parts are more than others, which is something that threw me off when we watched it at the cinema. Um, but I, I think it's a great movie. I, we use it for uh, demoing probably the most, um, apart from number one. Um, but, um, I, you know, again, it's got everything. It ticks all the boxes. Um, it's got some fantastic action scenes. It's got um, uh, different awesome colour, um, the detail in the sound, the bass, you know, when the boulder hits the ground and then there's the dinosaur and then Kong. Kong is, King Kong is phenomenal in that. 
uh, you know, you see Kong moving across the screen and he actually, you close your eyes and you can actually feel the base traveling if it's set up properly, obviously. Um, so, yeah, definitely Ready Player One is my number two. That's for sure. All right. Da, 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 da. Number one. What do you got? <sighs> number one. This will be, this is personal. Uh, it is what got me into this uh, hobby, crazy hobby of ours. Uh, it's what elevated cinema for me. It's where it all started. And that was uh, the remaster of The Matrix. I, I, I use The Matrix pretty much uh, all, the, all the time. Yep. I know you're going to go, what? Matrix? <laughs> number one, Matrix. Uh, I know number two and three probably looked a little bit better, um, but this is the best the film's ever looked. Um, the soundtrack on it is phenomenal. Um, the rain we use in it quite a bit to test Atmos. Uh, the um, Obviously, the, the lobby scene, um, the helicopter scene at the top. Uh, the the upmix and the, uh, the remix of this film has... Uh, brought this film back to life again. Uh, they fixed uh, The Matrix uh, when it was out on Blu-ray and I think DVD. It was quite blue. It had like a blue filter over it, uh, whereas obviously when you're in The Matrix, it's meant to be more green, whereas when you're out of The Matrix, it was meant to be more blue. And I was never very content with that, the look of that film when it was on Blu-ray. Um, but I think the the Matrix for me is the one I use the most, um, probably because it's a bit more personal. It means more to me, uh, and but it ticks all the boxes I need. Um, and when we finish a cinema uh, and we build one, I always put the Matrix on um, from start to finish, essentially. Uh, and uh, you know, once that movie's finished, um, everyone's smiling. Uh, and um, you know, um, there's there's obviously a lot of movies that we could be here forever. Um, you know, if you really want to um, be here all day. But, you know, there's things like, um, uh, you know, we used to use Mad Max Fury Road a lot. And, you know, I kind of got sick of using the same demo track. I think that kind of ever since Atmos started was the one that everyone used all the time. Um, but for me, number one, definitely Matrix. Um, there's no two, two that's about that. Interesting I knew, I, number I knew, one. I knew you were going to not like that. Very interesting <laughs> number one. <laughs> well, look, it's a grainy, it's a grainy film, but it's not. You know, it's the best. I mean, you have to say it's the best. It's that film's ever looked. I may have to revisit it because I haven't watched it on the Trinov yet. I think I saw it. I watched it on the Emotivo. So no. So here's an interesting comment, right? Because I've gone back and watched a lot of movies ever since we got a Trinov, and I know yeah. a lot of people are going to go, "Yeah, Trinov's not for everybody," and all the people are going to go, "It's very expensive," but. What a Trinov does and how it upscales movies, it takes even a 5.1 movie, you know, like The Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan hates Atmos. He doesn't do it, you know, but The Dark Knight on a Trinov, if you haven't watched Dark Knight in a long time and you own a Trinov, by all means, go back and watch The Dark Knight and see what that movie does to that track. You know, and, and it, it, it's, yeah, I mean, we, we, we go back and experience a lot of films I haven't watched in years because um, of... You know, you got better speakers, you got better processors, you got better amps. Let's go back yep. and rewatch these. Um, Two thousand and one, yeah. a space odyssey. I'll give that a shout out. It was going to be my, my in in my top five, um, but it's not something that uh, you know. I, I know there's a lot of haters on that film. Um, okay, but that that was a masterpiece. That was a masterpiece. I I enjoyed that. Yes, enjoyable movie. It is enjoyable. Now, when you're when you're 35 or 40 years old, not when you're 18. I hated it when it first came out. I didn't have the patience for it. I was like, I can't do this. But um, no, look, um, yeah, what, what, what you didn't expect? Matrix is number one, Shane. Uh, all right, let's go. I've kind of already done the, done this video. I think there's a couple that I've added since I've updated gear. But these are my top five picks for the movies that I that you guys always see when I'm reviewing speakers or subwoofers. So kicking off at number five on 4K Blu-ray or on Kaleidoscape, shout out to Kaleidoscape owners, number five is Fury on 4K. I yep. rock out with this movie all the time. Not only is it grainy, but it looks awesome. Great colors, very earthy tones in it. Uh, great highlights, great shadow detail, great explosions, peak highlights. Uh, of course, the Atmos. I use this use this title all the time for subwoofers just because it has yeah, well. such an aggressive uh punchy bass bang bang yep. bass you know the gut punches 
Every time when the they, tanks when fire. They, when the tanks are hiding in the bushes yep. and fire off. Yeah, we, we use that a lot for sub-testing. Yep. Yeah, and the, the machine that. guns. Uh, so that is my number five. Yeah, interesting. It could be up a little higher, but it's number five, though. Number four, also another very popular choice. I, this is another movie that I, I would have to re review because when I first did it, it was back in like 2016. There was an, not an Atmos version available for me, plus I didn't have the Cloud Escape. But yeah. number four is Edge of Tomorrow. Rock oh, this, Rock this. Have you watched it lately? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, about a few months ago on the train of, yeah. uh, you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, a lot of over. So if you watch the Atmos viewer, there's yeah. a lot of overhead effects, like a lot of movement. Yeah. Not just like static movement, but yeah. actual the yellow balls bounce around. There's a lot of stuff. With yeah. the helicopters flying over during that first war scene. Yep. Or actually during any war scene, actually. And then, uh, of course, the intro, it's... the 10, yeah. hertz, 10 hertz square sine waves there at the beginning, which mm -hmm. will destroy many subs. Like I said, I think <laughs> I've said many times before, I've, blew, I've blown up uh, like a first generation SVS subwoofer when I saw that movie. Um Actually, no, that was World of the Worlds. Never mind. I take that back. Another Tom Cruise movie, though. But yeah, you, you could destroy uh, several songs. You guys will learn. Sure. I'm, a, I'm a huge Tom Cruise fan. Oh, I love Tom Cruise. So, any, anything Tom Cruise is good. Yeah. Uh, plus, it's a great looking movie, too. Also, yep. Grainy. Another Grainy movie. Movie yep. on my list for the guys that say I'm a Grainy hater. That's the second movie that's Grainy on my list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, number four. Let's go to number three. This is a new addition. Ever since I got the Trinov, uh, Ready Player One has been making the rounds on my system as well. Yep. I think that was your number two. This is my number three. Yep, yep. Uh, just like just like you said, the the race scene at the beginning, just perfect movement, man. Like I, yeah. when you mentioned King Kong, I the first time I saw it, I rewatched it. I was like, is that Kong running behind my my space? You can hear yep. him kind of thumping behind your head. I was like, yeah, oh, shit, yeah. I'd never heard that before. Yeah. And uh, when I reviewed it, I think I had the uh, Integra at the time, back in 2016, 17, I had an Integra. And mm. I was like, oh, I was, I was like, I think I gave it like a seven or maybe like an eight or something for audio. But now it's right there, man. It's up in the high nines. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, great, awesome bass. I mean, just a lot of movement in it. And then, of course, the picture quality, it goes from, like you said, you know, it could be a bit CGI looking, but they are in a video game, so I get that aspect. And then the but real the life detail, stuff. the detail in his like tattoo and in his hair, yeah. it's just great. It's yeah, just great. awesome, awesome when they're in the yeah. CGI world. Yeah. And then of course, when they're outside in the real world, super grainy. Not exactly yeah. the most detailed, but I'm three I for three right now. On, it's done on purpose, man. You know, yeah. it's meant to be. It's meant to be depressing. It's meant to be sad. That's why yeah. they're in that. You know, that's that's why they're in that world. So yeah, and then you go into the uh, the VR world, and everything's happy and colorful. Everything's yep. clean. Yeah. Uh, again, like like uh, Enzo said, great colors, I, super detail yeah. during the CG parts, and you know, great great highlights, explosions, peak highlights. Mm. Overall, a great looking movie. Yeah, for sure. And number two, I use this all the time as well, on all my speaker reviews. A Quiet Place. I love this movie. I could watch this all the time, all day long. Yeah. I watch it. Um, I wasn't sure how I felt about it when I first saw it, but it has grown on me exponentially yeah. in further viewings. But very, not a bombastic mix. It's not a huge action movie. A lot of subtle ambiance. It's if a very quiet film. Yeah, if, you're, if you have <laughs> revealing speakers, uh, a lot of nuance in the mix. If you have crappy speakers, you're probably not going to really appreciate it, but there's a lot of stuff going on, the environmental sounds throughout every speaker. And of yeah. course, it ramps up every time the little beasties come on screen. Also, another grainy movie as well. I'm like four for four for grainy movies. It's not that it, grainy. It's it's grainy, but it's, it's yeah, 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 yeah it's got grain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's but like very it. good fan boss. That overhead. I remember. I I'd never watched it. I actually saw your review on it, mm -hmm. and you you mentioned about you know when they're in they're under the house and they can, you can yeah. hear the monsters on top. Yeah. And I was like, I want to go. Oh, well, let's go watch this. So I went. We watched it in the cinema, and yeah, shat myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was that scene. I was like, Jesus. That, that is good. That is very good. Yeah, that one scene where they're playing a uh, Monopoly in the I think the raccoon jumps on the ceiling and it's just like right yeah. in the top front left speaker. Not in the other yeah. speakers, but right in the top front left. And you hear it scurry across right across the front front of the top yeah. speakers there. Awesome sound. No, um, awesome. Very subtle. Very subtle. Yeah. So if I mean if your speakers can do subtle that good, then it's gonna just be, it's gonna even be better good. for action movies. Yep. yep. 
Uh, number two, or that was my number two. And then my Don't number one movie, I watch this one all the time, even though it's kind of a crappy movie. It <laughs> is, uh, it's Midway is my number one. Right. Movie. Yeah, Midway. Yeah. I mean, the, the plane scene at the beginning, just every every airplane, front to back, side to side, where right, do you okay. want to go? Yeah. And crazy amounts of bass in that movie too. Machine guns, explosions, I mean, there's everywhere. Peak highlights, explosions again, super bright, hitting those high nits. Um, colorful movie. I don't. Is, is there is there any nighttime shots? I don't. I don't. I think I usually get to like first. There's half. a couple. There's a couple just where they're walking. I think when he's walking to the um, shed or something, but very little. Yeah, yeah. very. Little. Yeah, I think there was yeah. like nighttime maybe on the ship too. Um, yeah, I, I get usually about a halfway. Then I'm like, all right, this demo's over with. So let me just move on to something else. But I actually, I actually thought your number one was going to be um that oh, the other war zombie one for uh what was it called again i always forget um very similar to midway but it's got like monsters and zombies oh in it. yeah the, yeah yeah the nazis have been testing or yeah, something I, yeah Fuck, I, forgot I can't remember because i remember you really liked that when you reviewed it um, you know the best part of it it was right at the beginning though yeah yeah true Every, yeah, yeah everything else was like i was like yeah it's okay but yeah, yeah. great man Overlord is the Overlord movie. Thanks, is, Chris yeah. Sexton. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, I, I think you know. Again, everyone's so different. So Midway for me, uh, it was good. It was just very loud. It, yes, there was lots of bass, lots of overheads. Um, it's not ironically, it's not something I use to demo. Um, no. No, I, I find that it's just too much. Um, you know, too much happening. Great to enjoy if you're by yourself and you're watching a movie, but demoing wise, um, yeah, yeah, I've actually never used it. Dude, I Something like else. it. I like it on the Trino. I think it was like maybe the first time I've really heard that airplane kind of just from the front corner to the back corner. I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's really like, uh, yeah, really intense. Like you could really hear it. It's, it's probably not, the better, not, the better not, out of the war movies. Yeah. It's not like you get in a, like the sensation where it kind of sounds like it moves over your head, but you can really just yeah. pinpoint it, just fly right over your head. I'm like, wow. I was like, that's, I was like, I guess that's why I spent all the money for a Trino. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, just great. Like, I think it's like very pinpoint accurate, like with the airplanes. So that's why yeah. it was uh, my number one. It's a good, good uh, Atmos effects, good bass. I mean, this is yeah, like an right. audio demo. I give, I think I give it like a ten or something like that. And video, like I said, video is really good too. Yeah. But that is my list, guys. What's on your list? Leave right. your top five list for your great for your top five demo discs that you use to show off your friends your home theater systems leave them in the comments down below and let us know what your list is i'll, okay. I'll give a shout out to a couple others if i can quickly they went on my list but they're ones that are like you know we see come up you know um a lot of the marvel stuff is a little bit underwhelming but ironically avengers was very good um uh infinity war um logan was very good uh, Gardens of the Galaxy, the opening scene to Gardens of the Galaxy with Little Dancing Groot. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah that's good. You know, that, that audio track, just the song, um, I can't remember who sings the song now, but um, uh, that 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 was fantastic. Ford versus Ferrari, you know, the, the racing scene, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, Gravity, you know, the intro, everyone goes yeah, Gravity is probably one of the best Atmos movies out, but to be honest, it, the intro is, the intro is very good. Yeah, um, uh, you know the rest of the movie is a bit flat, and there isn't that much. Pacific Rim is another one um, that ticks boxes for audio and video. Um, Passengers, because you, you, I, I liked Passengers. I think oh, you yeah. did too. Yeah, Passengers we watched that. Was very good. That was like really yeah. good. Awesome. Yeah, man, man. great video. Um, one, one of the most, probably the most popular ones we used to use a lot just to check colors and that on projectors was. Um, uh into the darkness you know the star trek the opening yeah, scene where they're on yep. that planet and there's those people that have got the the white makeup and but mm -hmm. the background's all red um you know that's one that is is quite great um but um i, I don't um i don't do musicals as such um a, a lot of people like no musicals but um greatest showman is very good very good yeah. if you really want to test that um you know, uh, something musical. I'm not a huge believer that a, a, cine, a speaker is better for cinema than it is for, you know, a good speaker is a good speaker. I mean, movies have audio in them, but um, I, I really enjoyed Greatest Showman, especially the end 
um, when he's wearing that red jacket. And there's a rumour that that red jacket was actually that material, that colour, was created on purpose for HDR and for mm. testing because the red on it is, um, is a, it's a phenomenal jacket. That, that red pops. If you've got a good projector, go watch the end of Greater Showman and look at that jacket and mm -hmm. look at the colour. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look, oh, mate, we could be here forever. Lucy was another good one. Uh, Dunkirk, Revenant. Revenant is a very good one as well. But, yeah. That was, that was also in my, uh, my uh, Focal review that's going to come up on Audioholics, by the way. Ooh, this is the revenue. Shout out. Good, good for the uh, good 5.1 mix for, you know, just like uh, a quiet place with the ambiance. Mm, good mm. mix for that. A little surprised it wasn't in Atmos, though. I think it's only 5.1. Yeah, well, the Trinov, I mean, have you watched that recently since you've got the, have you watched the whole movie on the Trinov? Nah, I just watched like the first five minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Trinov, the Trinov does the up mix quite well, actually, on Revenant. It's, it's pretty impressive. Um, the other one, when you mentioned Fury, it actually reminded me of, um, and I always forget about this movie, and I still always forget what it's called, the submarine one that came out recently with Gerard Butler. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, where um, the bass in that, that was great. Um, I can't remember what that was called. Um, but, um, yeah, there's just so many, mate, so many. And I think um, this probably leads to, you know, directors record and stuff's recorded a certain way for a particular reason um and it is a bit annoying a lot of the comments we get is everyone's kind of like oh but why does that sound different to that disc and that disc sounds 10 times quieter than the other one and then that one sounds really loud and it sucks that there's no kind of industry standard to be honest um but you know it is it, from disc to disc it's amazing how it just changes so much mm -hmm. you know it changes heaps so hunter killer thank you very much mr ride our show a rindish, rindy uh, show. Sorry if I got that wrong. Hunter Killer was that movie. I don't think I see it. I don't think I saw it. I think any Gerard Butler movie that's come after 300, <laughs> I've not watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, um, Olympus Has Fallen was good. I think that was the first yeah, one, right? Yeah, that, that was decent. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. other uh, ones. Uh, Hunter Killer was good. Hunter Killer was a good story. It was uh, one of Gerard Butler's better movies, to be honest. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I quite liked it. Um, I'd like to see, I haven't seen, so because we get our movies and on Kaleidoscape, um, Kaleidoscape's a sensitive topic at the moment, but um, there's a lot of stuff that we don't get that's on 4K and you do and vice versa. Like for me, um, uh, one of what was one of the movies? We don't have it on 4K. Well, actually, um, the your number two there with, or number three with Tom Cruise, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, we don't have yeah. that on 4K over here. Um, I think it's only 4K on Kaleidoscope. Yeah, uh, it's on Voodoo as well. You, I don't think you guys have Voodoo, but it's on Voodoo. No, yeah. we don't. No, no, no Voodoo. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, again, you know, it, it just comes down to the fact that there's, there's just in no industry standard. I always tell my guys that if you ever doubt there's something wrong with your system, just put your favorite movie on, and if that sounds fine, you don't have a problem. It's just that, unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of a lot of films are just so different. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I need to go back and uh, re-review uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow is uh, is a good one. I think you'll that that on Trinov. Actually, you know what I really enjoyed the other day, uh, Joker. Yeah, great Joker, music Joker, on that, man. Good soundtrack. Just the the, the yeah. detail up close. You know, when he's wearing the mm -hmm. makeup as the Joker and the detail, uh, the, the close ups, um, the. Yeah, the HDR and the colors, the detail, the, the, the soundtrack. Joker's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I might even start using it a little bit more because um, I, I, I quite liked it. I can't use that in my speaker reviews. So I, I tried it once and they, they dinged me for the just a couple of yeah. notes, a melody. I was like, first copyright. I was like, shit. Can't do yeah. that. Come on, YouTube. Yeah, I know. Um, the, um, there was one that you did recently. Um, I was going to talk to you about it. It'll come to me. Oh, I, I, I'm surprised that you don't, that your the Matrix wasn't in your top five. I didn't think it was that great looking. I mean, I thought it was good looking, but it wasn't like when I first saw it. I was like, okay, it looks good, but it wasn't like yeah. I was like, I was like, wow, shit, this is fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean, as an overall, if you're ticking I, all boxes, uh, you know, I think it's very good. Uh, maybe if you're just talking video only. Yeah, look, maybe video only. For some people, it might not be in the top five. Um, 
but I, I for me again, I, I base things based on that cinematic experience and um, it, watching The Matrix on 4K is the best that movies ever looked and, and looking at it in relation to uh, as a it, it just kind of stuck me straight back to being a, you know a 16 year old boy in the cinema again. Um, you know, I, that, that I it, think I've seen it so many times uh, on Dolby Digital back in the day in home theater or my home theater back then i think i've just seen yeah. that gun sh the the lobby scene so many times just like, <laughs> i never think about it anymore i think it was the only scene used in the 90s or early 2000s in any av store in the mm -hmm. world um it's the same way everyone like honestly like the last 10 years all i ever see is um that atmos demo with the airplane that um angela jolie movie um, oh yeah that I actually don't think sounds that great, but everyone uses it. You know, you get your Dolby Digital yeah. Atmos disc that has all the sampling of all the films. Well, yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but, like, I didn't think that was that Unbre great. But Unbreakable? Is that what it's called? Unbro unbroken. 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 Okay. Yeah, I didn't think that was that great. Um, Mac Mad Max, the opening scene when there's the little girl going, you know, yeah, that you is great. It. That mm -hmm. is great, but I think it looks horrendous, and I don't think it sounds that great, and it's a terrible movie as well. <laughs> you <laughs> so, don't like Mad Max? I didn't like Mad Max oh, Fury Road, no. I didn't uh, like it the first time I saw it. Maybe, no. maybe about the third time I saw it, I started liking it more. Yeah, I'll probably have to go back and watch it again. But, you can um, watch it in 3D. It's better in 3D. In 3D? Okay, yeah. yeah. So, I actually, I knew this might come up. I like watching movies in 3D. I'm Lots sad that it never that it never's taken off. Um, we had the BenQ X12000H, which is in America. I can't remember the model number, and that was probably the best 3D projector I'd ever experienced. To be honest, um, great, especially um, our old favorite there, um, the Blue People. What's it called again? Avatar. Oh yeah, Avatar. I watched yeah. that in, uh, maybe like last week. I think I saw it. I watched it again oh. in 3D on the Trinol. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, good it's movie, good, man. isn't it? Good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do hate that. It's, I hate that it's a sixteen by nine. So, I'm like, I got to cut, <laughs> cut off my my cinema scope screen. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But other than that, man, it's still awesome three D. Yeah, look, and I guess um, you know, with a lot of these films that are now doing kind of dual ratio, um, you know, we tend to use anamorphic lenses a lot, which will just cut the top and bottom. Directors have a safe zone, which is normally kind of like right there. And anything top and bottom is normally information that's not important. Um, so, you know, we tend to use anamorphic lenses, which keeps the movie the same ratio at all times. Um, but a piece of me kind of likes that whole immersive experience by a, a taller screen. Um, you know, we did a job recently which had a two-to-one ratio screen, which is kind of... Yeah. Essentially, there's always going to be some form of black bars, whether it's sides or top or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it just meant that you could watch anything, anything streaming, anything, you know, just fit without having to chop anything off. Um, you know, the IMAX stuff, uh, you know, even Tom Cruise in The Last Mission Possible with the helicopter going through the cliff um, in IMAX, that was fantastic. Um, but, yeah, look, I mean, um, it's just getting better and better, right? Films yeah, if I was gonna do a big screen like sixteen by nine, it would have to be like wall to wall and ceiling to floor. Yeah, it would have to do that. So I would really get the uh, whenever there was one of the one of the ten IMAX movies that's out there, then yeah, it would yeah, just yeah. automatically it's fill the entire screen. Then it would blow me away. Yeah, you guys well, do a lot of that in the US wall wall to wall, floor to ceiling. I see a lot of that. We don't over here, but yeah, yeah, it yeah. just makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense, especially for IMAX. It makes sense. Yeah, but again, like when we made that list of IMAX movies, I mean, there was like ten, or we could just only come up with ten. ten. That was it. <laughs> yeah, and then the uh, rest you know, was like haven't... documentaries. Yeah, that's true. No, you're right. Um, uh, one thing I haven't done yet is I got for my for Christmas I got um, um, the Lord of the Rings remastered on 4K. Um, you thought, you thought, it was, that... you thought it was shite. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it. I love Lord of the Rings, but I haven't. Did yeah. you review it? On full uh, not like formally, no, because I thought it was no. shitty. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sad to know. Um, there was that I was looking forward to doing. Um, I haven't watched Top Gun on 4K yet. <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. That's it's okay. all right. I would, I would give yeah, it, was, if I was going to review it, I'd probably give it like a 7 2. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, in other words, just watch the first five minutes. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you'll tell right from the get-go. You can tell just from the little Paramount, the little Paramount, how uh, yeah. soft and green it is, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, um, Roy just – we were talking about Gemini Man before. I, I like The movie obviously was very average, but I didn't like the fact that how – the problem when you're using that type of camera to shoot a movie is you can't really use CGI because if you do, it looks terrible, right? <laughs> And that movie recorded on that camera just looked like someone was walking around with a camcorder going, follow Will Smith, and, yeah, it looked, you know, it's going to look great. But I just felt like it looked like a bloody documentary or a, or, a, or a sitcom. I felt like I was watching Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, Gemini Man? On oh, Gemini Man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks – I mean, it's, it's a cool, like, demo, cool tech demo. Yeah. I guess. yeah, yeah, if you just want to say, look how good pictures getting, but – you know, I don't know. I, I find um, it just takes it. It disconnected me from the film. It, it didn't. It didn't feel like I was watching. Um, uh, you know, a cinema. I don't know. It just felt like uh, it was weird. I, I can't explain it. It. it and I, I, know I didn't even enjoy the movie probably because of it. I'd like to see a version of it with grain or just a standard, um, and, and see if it immerses me a bit better because it really was putting me off quite a bit. Um, <laughs> But Mel yeah. says, the sound on Top Gun was great. Here's the thing when you take like these old stereo mixes back in the day, yeah. and then you try to upmix them to Atmos, it still sounds like it was recorded back in the 80s or whatever. Mm. And there's a specific sound that it just sounds old. Like it doesn't sound like that dynamic. You know, it sounds. Mm. Uh, and then you try to spread out that kind of almost crappy sound quality through 11 speakers, it gets yeah. a little worse. It just doesn't sound that good. Well, yeah. I guess the more speakers and the, the better the equipment, the more the errors show as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whereas if you've only got a, um, you know, a basic system, you might not notice those flaws. But, um, yeah, I think um, um, there's just so many. And, and the, the thing is, is that, like, you know, um, it's very subjective, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's uh, a, a lot of movies that are, are really good. One of the ones that... Um, uh, what was the name of the film? I'm terrible with remembering film names. Um, for me, Star Wars was a letdown. All the new Star Warses, the films were a letdown. Last Jedi, ironically, the worst one out of all of them had probably the better sound out of all of them. Yeah, uh, I like the uh, I like the last one, the um the, the mix on that last one. The mix I haven't watched it yet on our cinema. I've watched it at oh, the really? movies when it first came out, but I haven't watched it at our um uh, in our demo room. Um, yeah, uh, we'll, yeah, but um, you know, Disney Disney has a tendency to break people's hearts when it comes to that most up mix. <laughs> the uh, oh, did you watch Godzilla and Kong yet? You did, yeah. You told me you did. I did. I spoiled it for you, didn't I? No, yeah, you did. <laughs> 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 you didn't watch it at your house though, did you? No, no. Did I place? watched it. At, I watched it at the cinema. Oh, um, we've got a specific cinema here in Perth that is a Crick cinema. Um, I mean, Crick's do a lot oh, of the commercial cinemas, really? but it's a, it's an actual Crick's Atmos cinema. So it's a very intimate, um, 20 seat gold class cinema. Yeah. Um, and it's got Crick's latest kind of commercial product in there. Yep. Um, so anything that's kind of, you know, um, I watched Mortal Kombat in that as well. That was great. Well, that's um, coming in 15 minutes here. Oh, is it? I better not say anything. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that. Have you, have you watched the trailer? <laughs> I uploaded the trailer and then I didn't watch it though, so I have no idea what goes okay. on. I, I really, I really like Mortal Kombat. I mean, you're very limited on that type of story, but I think you know, what they've done with it um, is very smart, um, and I think um, it will probably see a trilogy out of it more than likely. Of course, um, of course it will. I could be not. Yeah. But Disney has the app Mouse. Now that's funny. <laughs> the you Keeping know with the Endgame Giants. was Endgame was pretty good. Uh yeah, I, yeah, I think I preferred Infinity War. The way it was mixed, probably. You think so? I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, the only thing I, I watch in Endgame is the end part, the the final battle. That's the only thing. The I, final I can, battle. I can stand. Yeah. Yeah, I but, think I'm still upset about Robert Downey Jr. He's not dead. No, they of course a, he's not. They got a whole so, multiverse coming. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I think um, and Endgame was good. Yeah, Captain Marvel actually mixed pretty well. Did you do a review on that? Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it a few years yeah. ago. Yeah. Do you remember what you gave it? Uh, nah, I don't remember. Man, watch so no. many movies. I think I think you gave it an eight and a half and a nine from memory. Yeah, it was probably like an eight something. It was it yeah. was quite good. Um, but the sound was good. Um, yeah, look, and and you know the thing is, a lot of the Christopher Nolan stuff, ironically, 
um, is immersive and gives you anxiety. Um, and I think I was watching, I was watching Interstellar because uh, I love that movie and I yeah, hadn't watched it in a, I hadn't Great watched movie. it in a, um, in a, you know, reference cinema. Mm. Um, my Apple Watch started going off. I mean, I'm a big bloke, but my Apple Watch started going off saying your heart rate's bloody <laughs> going too high because the, the anxiety that that soundtrack was giving you is just crazy. That's, and Dunkirk. That's the only movie well. when I, I don't know what subs I had here at the time, but <laughs> I had the guys over. We were watching Interstellar when they go up to the uh the water planet the ice planet or whatever oh yeah with the um with the big wave yeah and there's that that, yeah, yeah. that big bong. Yeah. I, I, the subs are just cranked all of a sudden yeah. i'm getting phone calls from yeah. the neighbors downstairs hey what's uh going on up there I was like, <laughs> oh. it's like everything is shaking down here I was like, yeah, sorry yeah. <laughs> only time hey. only time i ever heard from the neighbors and to be very honest, pretty much all the Christopher Nolan movies are very good. Um, the fact that he has this, he's a bit of a traditionalist and doesn't really get in the whole, you know, Atmos thing. Um, I mean, he did a great job. I didn't actually realize until recently that he actually oversaw the upmix and the editing of 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh, did he? Yeah, on the 4K Master. He's the one that redid, they redid the whole film, essentially. So he's credited on that. Mm, so for him, for him, it was the movie that he got um, into. You know, made him get into it. Um, no wonder the audio was mediocre. Yeah, <laughs> come on, it wasn't that bad. No, it, it's it's not the best, but it's still a very good. Um, I, w- I was very impressed with the way that that film came across on 4K. To be very honest, that's it's me decent, personally. Yeah. It's a slow slow burn for sure. Can't believe you didn't like the Matrix. <laughs> the Matrix is still good. I, I enjoy the movie. <laughs> it's not gonna make my list. <laughs> oh god. I mean it's yeah, it's but I'd like to hear in the comments what everyone else is. Just actually write everyone should write their five five top and be cool to compare to everyone. But um talking concerts, sorry, I remember what I was gonna say. The Hans Zimmer. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That was a good, you know, Atmos mix, the concert, the live concert there. Um, Live in Prague. Thanks, boys. I couldn't remember what it was called. Um, But, yeah, I mean, um, I I thought Kong Godzilla was good. Uh, uh, The bass in it was good. The film was was good. It was so different. It was like 10 dB lower, maybe maybe like 15 dB lower than the uh, previous three. Uh, Were you streaming it? Yeah. Yeah, see, that could be an issue too. Because well, even funny, if someone else said that. Even if we're streaming the older ones, way louder. Yeah, right, okay. See, I yeah. thought um, that it was the bass was great in it, but I was in a proper commercial private cinema, so I don't know. Maybe they – I don't know. I didn't yeah. think it was – what I'm, what I am going to say about that movie is they missed the perfect opportunity with that um, – To make it good. You know, the, <laughs> it was a good movie. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> the best, but it was good. I mean, the CGI nice. is phenomenal. First of all, it was some of the best CGI I've ever seen in film. So now we got um, Kong, Kong sitting in a throne with an axe. I'm that like, was a bit far fetched. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, tr- yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. when is the Rock going to show up? Because he's in the center of the Earth now. All of a sudden, yeah, the, the yeah. Rock should have showed up somewhere. Well, that getting about the center of the Earth. Now this was my. They had the perfect opportunity where they could have done because you know that how he jumped from one part of the Earth to the upside down part. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of gave me the uh, vibe of um, uh, Inception. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, perfect opportunity to have Kong and fucking Godzilla jumping around, <laughs> excuse the French, jumping around in this planet that spins around. Um, there could have been a fight scene. It would have been epic. It would have been Inception-like. But like, Man, I don't know, yeah. man. I started, I started losing it. We are sitting there drinking mojitos. We're like, is this movie as shitty as we think it is or what's going on? <laughs> no. I was like, first, first we're like, we're like, we can't even hear the dialogue. I was like, where's, we're like, where's the bass? And then he's mm. like, just, just keep cranking it. I was like, yo, I had this up like way louder than I normally would. Like, I felt like I was going to destroy my speakers, but it was just super loud. I was different, like, different to how I experienced that. I wonder if there was an issue with the streaming or, uh, mind you, uh, it was a HBO Max. Yeah, is this your HBO Max? Yeah. yeah, see, I mean, again, I didn't stream it, but I did stream Justice League off HBO Max. That um, was good. And that, that was decent. And that, well, that was disappointing yeah. for me. Really? Mine was decent. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I've just bought it. It just came out on Apple uh, iTunes yesterday here in Australia. Oh. So I'm going to I'm gonna watch that version because apparently it's meant to be better huh. for, um, for the video and sound. So, 
Um, I have to compare it there. I have to compare it. But, um, yeah, look, uh, any – should we start taking some questions? Is there any questions? I think a lot of people are... – uh, So let's hang out for 10 more minutes so I can go watch Mortal Kombat. Ten, but let's, uh... Tenet. Did you like Tenet? I didn't like it the first time I saw it. I liked it the third time I saw it because I, I yeah. had more time to like process it and see what was going yeah. on. Yeah. Plus, I couldn't understand it at the theater, a single word they were saying. Yeah, the the audio. Yeah. I mean, Christopher Nolan does that, right? Like when, when he had Bane and it was like, I'm killing yeah. Bane. And I'm like, what did you say, Bane? And then they actually fixed it in the DVD release. They yeah. re-edited Bane's voice. Um, But yeah, poor Tom Hardy, he's always, in every film he makes, he's always around a mask. Was he in a... He wasn't a tenant, was he? No. No, no, no. Referring to Bane, talking about Christopher Nolan putting masks on... Uh, even in uh, Dunkirk, Tom Hardy was... A, you couldn't understand the pilot. He had the bloody <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, right. And I was like, what the hell is Tom Hardy saying? Um, so, but anyway, poor bloke. Um, uh, yeah, I had to, like, bump up my... Uh, but, like, the third time I watched it, I was like, you know, I'll just, I'm just going to bump up 5DB, my center channel. I feel yep. like I'm cheating when I do that, but I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't like doing it, but I got to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, but the fact that obviously a lot of people said the same thing because when the Batman Rises came out, there was a specific announcement made that the room, that, that Bane had been re edited. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, so, do we have any questions here? I don't think we do. Just Mortal, I'd like to shout out to Mortal Kombat. I didn't actually realize this, but it was shot here in Australia, in South Australia, which is the middle of nowhere, right? And it's a very mm. small state. And um, the film looked great. The back, like, we can tell it's South Australia because being there, so I can relate. Um, but, and it had a lot of Australians in it. And KO in Mortal Kombat is a hell of a laugh as a character. And he's played by an Aussie, and it's fantastic. I feel, and, I feel and like you're the gonna spoiler love is coming. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just going to say, I really like the, the the whole movie. was great. I, I, and I think, you know, um, there's obviously the the usual um, Japanese actors that are always in Japanese movies, um, but the rest of them are unknowns. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that I don't even, never knew who they were, um, or at least I don't remember them. But, um, yeah, the fact that the film was shot here in Australia was a uh, surprise news to me. I will be watching it shortly. Uh, tell yeah. tell the folks what you got behind you there. Okay, so I'm in. Uh, we have another business which is called Douglas Hi Fi, and we only do high end hi fi here. We don't do any cinema at the shop. It is literally seven rooms of two channel. Uh, in in this room, this is a room that kind of is around the fifteen thousand dollar to twenty thousand dollar speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some Magicos which are right there. Um, I'll move that way. We have some Magicos, we have some Kef Reference, and we have some Rebels. Um, and our actual equipment, I'll see if I can shift this a bit, maybe. What subs you got there? Uh, we run RHEL. We're massive RHEL ambassadors. Um, we use, in this room, we've got RHEL T7Is. Obviously, there's new RHEL coming out soon. Yeah. Um, in our other room, we've got T9Is. We've got their S-Series. Um, and... Um, you know, we, we are huge hi-fi uh, audiophiles as well as uh, much as we love building cinemas. Um, but we've got some, we've got a room that is essentially what we call the gold class room, which has forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 speakers along with twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 amplifiers. Um, so Douglas, Douglas is a very high-end um, uh, two-channel business. Very nice. Um... What's his face? Roy likes the look of Kef Reference. Yeah, I I, yeah. I, I got like a love hate relationship. Like I feel like it's too boxy. Like when I look at the blades, I'm like, damn, those are sick. And then I look at the yeah. arms, I'm like, that's a box. Yeah, very traditional. I mean, yeah. I think probably Kef Reference is probably due for an overhaul. I don't think they've had one for a long time. Um, but a very traditional speaker. Um, Magico. I mean, the Revels are nice and curved. You know, uh, as well. <laughs> I think those are good. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the white cones myself. Yeah. Um, but the, um, the Magico are impressive. Uh, we've got Sonus Faber here as well, which is actually, these are really good. Um, let's see if I can turn this around. 
We've got um, some Mar- Logan, Marga Logan Electrostats. We've I got some Sonos Faber Olympica Novas. These are some of my favorite. I'm a huge ambassador for um, bookshelves, and mm-hmm. a very good bookshelf with a pair of subs is better than a tower all day long. Yeah. Uh, and an audio file will take a very dynamic, uh, very uh, in you know detailed um, bookshelf. But they're they're Electra Electamatol threes about. Mm-hmm. They're about seventeen thousand dollars for a pair. Um, you know, I heard, the the, uh, I heard about their their showroom, the uh, Macintosh house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Macintosh. Oh, I've got a love hate relationship with Macintosh, um, but um, their Sonus Faber. I mean, I'm Italian, so I'm biased. But <laughs> the Sonus Faber stuff is. Uh, they actually sent me some Sonus Faber on walls to for cinema. Oh yeah, they, I'm, the I'm, ones, right? I'm, yeah, I'm really keen yeah. to to hook those up and see. Um, but yeah, we we do a lot of rail subs, um, even in our cinemas. Rail predators, we use a lot of. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, it's fun, fun, fun little hobby. That's for sure. Yeah, I got the um, I got the T nine X's paired up with yeah. the supers right now. Sweet little yep. subs. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they I don't know if they didn't like my video because I said it wasn't like home theater worthy. <laughs> um. So. Uh, uh, look, I mean, I'm pretty transparent with the boys at Rel. I yeah. say at the end of the day, they've got their HT series, which obviously yeah. is dedicated. Yeah. But I mean, a, a good sub's a good sub. There's no reason why, uh, uh, you know, in some jobs we've used T9s because the the predators were too big, yeah. um, and the 1000 little Rel, you know, I prefer the T9. So, um, yeah, um, look, uh, I think they're definitely more a, a, an audiophile sub in that in yeah. that T nine T seven. I'd be using a different sub for cinema personally. Yeah, that's what um, I was. But yeah, music, you know, we love them for music. We listened to yeah, like, yeah. All, all day today for like five hours today. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's that? What is your home theater equipment? My own personal home theater equipment. Very interesting. Um, I get bored very easily, so I tend to change every every couple of years. But um, I had um, originally uh, Kef in my cinema a long time ago. Um, I had um, uh, Crick. I got Cricks now in my cinema. Uh, Cricks is an Australian brand. For those that don't know, head over to cricks.com.au. Have a look. Um, they're going to be coming your way, I think, soon to the US. Um Crix has been doing commercial cinema since the seventies. I mean, they're probably in eighty percent of the cinemas in the world. Um, for those that didn't know, um, so they've kind of got a really good residential product, um, and um, they've been doing it for a long time out of Little Old Australia. Um, and I, what I like about it is it's just a, a detailed, loud, no BS speaker. You know, it, it does the job. It's efficient. I think they're ninety-five dB efficient. Um, you know, so that, that's my, um, my speakers at the moment are are quick speakers. You need to tell them to send me 11 of them over here so I can hear something. Oh, I was talking to the boys at Crooks. They'll, we'll we'll send you something. I'd like to get your, uh, your, uh, idea on it. Uh, question. Do you guys, uh, handle Anthem or no? Yeah, yeah, we do Anthem. Okay. Uh, we, our stock only just arrived in Australia, uh, pre-sold out for six months. Um, huh. So, um, Well, do you think yeah. the AVM90 with four independent sub-outs will eliminate need for DSP? Well, I mean, it kind of has DSP <sighs> built in. so Built in. So, yeah, you don't need to use like a mini DSP if you've got independent. It's, it's like on our Trinov. You, if you've got 14 speakers and you've got another four channels, we run the subs off that. Um so, but you are only as good as the processor itself. Anthem, their direct, the whole, um, not direct, sorry, um, audio. Uh, Arc Genesis. Arc, yeah, Arc Genesis. It is very good. Uh, sub, I haven't had a lot of play with sub, but it's probably more a question for um, Andrew on the subs with the Anthem. It's still good. I think you can go deeper, deeper, deeper down with a mini DSP personally. But mini DSP opens a can of worms. It's not an easy thing to use or set up or, or have a play with. I mean, uh, I think Arc has its own independent sub. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I mean. As as, yeah. as a plug and play option, the yeah. the Anthem AV ninety is is perfect. I agree. Put all four of them off there. You don't have to use a, a DSP of any sorts. But if you really are a bit of a DIY, I think a lot of people would probably still use their own. Mini DSP or their own their own product. Yeah, that's what I think too. 
But all right, we're at exactly one hour. Guys, we're going to wrap this up right here because I'm about to go watch Mortal Kombat. And uh, Enzo, tell them where they can find you. Yeah, so you can head over to um, us at Home Theater Engineering. So we have our own YouTube channel. Our channel is a little bit more on the technical side. Um, you know, we leave the reviews and that to Shane to do. Um, but uh, Home Theater Engineering, click like, subscribe. Um, we did run a competition. I think I'll run another competition in the next three or four weeks. Anyone that comes over and subscribes that has subscribed in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, we'll, we'll come up with a prize. We'll probably announce something next week. Did the uh, winner get to you last time or no? Not yet, actually. I oh, was about did. to say, we still haven't heard from okay. the gentleman. Um, you haven't? So actually. No, I haven't. No, not yet. Okay. Um, so we'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll try doing a search today and see if I can just find him myself. Uh, I'll, I'll put a little, well, send me his name. He'll text me his yeah, name. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll send you the details. I'll do it on the community tab. I'll just put up, hey, come get your prize. Come get your prize. All right, guys. Thank you very much. It was just a, something a little bit more relaxed and laid back today. Not so technical, yeah. you know. Just our, uh, our favorite five movies to use. My number one is The Matrix. Not everyone's going to like that, but it is what it is. <laughs> All right, guys. I usually end this stream by plugging something. I mean, he already ends already plugged his channel, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna plug my Patreon one more time here. Uh, if you guys want to sign up for my Patreon, you can sign up for twelve dollars a year at one dollar a month, or next level up five dollars a month. You want to be my best friend? You can sign up for ten dollars a month. Uh, you will get discounts from Value Electronics through me. I will liaison the the offer and also help you guys out uh, with Enzo as well. So if you guys don't want to spend four thousand dollars on a room design, I get it to you for two thousand dollars. That's the kind of <laughs> That's the kind of discount I'll get for you guys, all right? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> but, but all right, guys, thanks for checking out the streams. If you want to listen to this on Apple iTunes, I think I put up the last episode on iTunes that uh, we did last time. Uh, cool. It's on iTunes right now and on Spotify and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. We shall see you again on the next video. Also, look out for the Mortal Kombat review coming tomorrow.